Well, I've already given you the Poisson and the binomial distribution. Let's have a few words about an example with normal distribution. And this one will involve the sampling of the mean, so we are using the central limit theorem. Here's your problem. Diameter of a brand of ping pong balls, it's approximately normally distributed with a mean of 1.3 and a standard deviation of 0 0.04. If you select a random sample of 16 ping pong balls, what is the probability uh, that the sample mean will be less than 1.28? Let's take a look at that. Okay, here's what we know. We know the mean and the standard deviation of population. That was given. Our mean is 1.3 and the standard deviation is 0 0.4. That we know. Uh, now, what is the mean of the distribution of the means? Hopefully you remember that from your readings. The mean of the distribution of the means would be the same as the mean of the, of the original population. So that's also 1.3. What is uh, the standard deviation of the distribution of means uh, when their sample size is 16? There's a formula for that. The formula is this. Now, notice we're taking the standard deviation of the population, we're placing it there. We're dividing it by the square root of your sample size, square root of 16. So you're basically taking 0 0.04 and dividing it by 4. Your answer is 0 0.01. These are the two numbers you're going to use because we're talking about the distribution of means. This is the mean of the distribution of means and this is the standard deviation. So those are the numbers we're going to use. All right, let's figure out in Excel the probability that x is less than 1.28 in our distribution of means. This is the formula you would use. You'll use the 1.28, which is the value we're going for. The uh, mean is 1.3, and as we calculated the standard deviation we're going to use, is 0 0.01, and since it's cumulative, we say true. So that's the answer to the first part of the question. This answers the question that, that we posed at the beginning of this uh, slideshow. What if I pose a slightly harder one? What if we wanted x to be between the values of 1.31 and 1.33, and we wanted the probability of that? You do this exactly how we did it in the binomial and the Poisson. Calculate the probability that x is less than 1.33. Subtract off the probability that it's less than 1.31. This is how you would write that in Excel. Notice here's your upper limit here, your lower limit here, and we're subtracting the two values. I'll let you do that as an exercise and get the number. The probability is 60% that the sample mean will be between what two values? That's a different problem that we've been studying so far. They're giving us the probability. They want us to find the x values that will give us a 60% probability of being in this area of the curve. Okay, if that area is 60%, what do you think this area here is and this area here is? Well, the whole thing has to add up to 1, right? 100%. And we want it to be symmetric, so this would have to be 20%, and that would have to be 20%. That's the key here. You want to find a value here, an x value, so it's that its cumulative probabil probability is 20%. You want to find an x value here where its cumulative probability is 80%, the 20 plus the 60, right? There's a formula in Excel that allows you to do that called norm inverse. Here I'm placing the 20%, our mean and standard deviation that we had before, and we're calculating that, 1.296. To get the upper limit, we'll replace the 0.2 with the 0.8. That gives us this value. Now, are these two values truly symmetric around our mean of 1.3. Add this number to that number, divide by 2, 
and I think you'll find that the average is 